you know, my grandpappy Lovecraft is a pretty cool guy. Uh, racist, unfortunately, <laughs> but, but a good writer. If you could uh, fund one movie based on his works, what movie would it be? Uh, first of all, Lovecraft is not our ancestor, thankfully. <laughs> he is mine. But, um, yeah, man, H.P. Uh, Lovecraft, of course, is uh, one of the fathers of weird fiction. Yeah. Definitely the one that got the most uh, attention yeah. and continues to get the most attention. Although he was not the originator, people like, uh, you know, Ambrose Bierce and oh, yeah, Ambrose. Arthur Machen and, oh, yeah. and stuff like that. Was um, my favorite. Exactly. <laughs> Your irreverent disregard of them is just proof positive of how much of an effect they've had on, on uh, you know, the, uh, the modern day. The, the masses. Yeah. But Lovecraft still gets a lot of attention. Yeah. Some of it negative because, yes, that guy Oof. was hating yeah. on anybody that wasn't anglo-saxon yeah he didn't like them and uh sometimes it, it, it uh stained his work yeah a little bit but uh you know what man he 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 was a very influential writer yeah especially for the horror genre so sometimes especially when it comes to stuff in the past mm -hmm. you have to overlook things you have to realize that times were different times were different doesn't excuse it he was an asshole and that's that. And and you got to kind of hope that if he was around today, he wouldn't be that way. Yeah. But uh, he was. Be so Hanging out with food posts and shit. Yeah. So despite him being a complete butt about <laughs> race issues, yeah. Lovecraft was, what we're saying here, is uh, a very important writer. Um, and he, he has, he created quite the oeuvre of short stories. Yeah. And for kind of novella length. Uh, tales along the way. So your question is, which one? If I had to pick one, would you like to see? Would I like to see him film now? Lovecraft movies have been made before. Yes. To uh, varying results. There was that one Tori Spelling produced. Yeah, surprisingly, Tori <laughs> Spelling was kind of like a secret producer on a, on a Lovecraft adaptation that was kind of like a. It was it was pretty much Shadow over Innsmouth. Only it was also a gay movie. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? Uh, but you know what? It was actually pretty well made, uh, considering that it, it weaved this subtext into it. The idea of this, uh, you know, because in Shadow Over Innsmouth, a man inadvertently goes back, or really something in his blood calls him back yeah. to this place where it turns out that he... Freaky shit's going on. Yeah, he, he, he has a a blood link to these ancient beings. Yeah. Uh, well, they kind of use the same, uh, um, concept only with a gay man returning to a town where his lifestyle was frowned upon or was it the, oh. they, they kind of, yeah, it was a really interesting take, but surprisingly, yeah, Tori spelling was in the movie and apparently put up some money for it. Yeah. That's weird. Um, it's interesting to note that the filmmakers later revealed that they didn't really understand horror. <laughs> All right. But you know what? Some people have used that to deride the movie. But some of the greatest horror movies were made by people that hated horror. Yeah. They were one-off. So it didn't surprise me at all that these people said that. And they still created kind of a quality version of Shadow Over Innsmouth. But Shadow Wars Over Innsmouth seems to be one of the big ones to be adapted. Yeah, Most so notably was Storm Gordon's yeah. uh, Dagon, which was amazing. Yeah, it was pretty it's great. It's the go-to. It's a go-to Innsmouth adaptation. Uh, Color Out of Space has been adapted a variety of times. There's going to be a new one. There's going to be a new one from Apanos Cosmatos, oh, the guy that, that directed Over the Black Rainbow, and of course, recently Mandy with Nicolas Cage. Mm. And apparently he's going to be in that, presumably as the farmer. You think Cosmatos loves Clamatos? Man, I hate you. <laughs> I fucking despise the fact that you said that. But I'm going to let it slide. Did you see it coming is the question. I saw some fucking stupidity coming. <laughs> and I wanted to kill you before it happened. <laughs> Fortunately, it happened. You did not. <coughs> anyway. Uh, yeah, it's going to be directed by this cat, and Nick Cage is going to be insane in it. Oh, yeah? Which is suitable because the farmer goes through some pretty rough times when this alien entity, 
seen only as a weird mass of colors, mm -hmm. crash lands in this backyard and begins to mutate and change his family. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting, for sure. It's already filming. I'm, I'm all for it. Yeah. Uh, Lovecraft is always interesting, but more often than not, the adaptations fall by the wayside and or can't or don't possess the ability and or money to be 100% loyal to what Lovecraft brought. Or, more interestingly, it's almost impossible at times to capture yeah. the feeling <gasps> of cosmic horror that Lovecraft evoked. So, all that in mind, what movie would I like to see brought to life? Or, I'm sorry, what story would I like to see brought to life of Lovecraft's it's difficult. The go-to answer for a lot of people is at the Mountains of Madness. They want to see Del Toro bring his vision to life. I want to see that too. But honestly, you know what? <coughs> I like at the Mountains of Madness. But I'm not gaga over it. I'm not the wildest uh, about it at all. I actually think he's he wrote better stuff with like Shadow Out of Time. Which I found ten oh, times the, better the than... Little guys. Yeah, man, and then yeah. Shadow Out of Time covers so much time adequately, you know. Yeah, and it's Shadow. And uh, again, urge to destroy your gullet. Did you see that one? Surging did through you me. See that coming too? Uh, yes, I did, and I and I hated it the moment I felt it. Uh, yeah. No, but uh, Shadow Out of Time was was just just something that that, that I would see as virtually impossible, yeah. short of having an amazing imagination and, and ability. To capture such a large concept. And of course tons of money. To throw around. Um, to do. So. Uh, that would be nice. Shadow of Time would be nice. Uh, of of the longer stories. That would be the one I would love to see. Brought to life. But it would take someone of immense talent. And imagination to bring that. I don't see anybody ever doing it. To be honest with you. But Stranger Things have happened. Yeah, Lord of the Rings was brought to life. Maybe, uh, I never thought that was going to happen. I got the perfect person to do it, uh, Tommy Wiseau. Dude, if Tommy Wiseau directs Lovecraft, I'm there. <laughs> You're in love? I'm in love. Crap. It's going to be the crappiest piece of shit ever. You're in love with his craft. But uh, front row tickets. Yeah. But uh, the point is, that would be ideal. But I would really, 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 this would be my choice. I would really love to see the case of Charles Dexter Ward done right. It's been adapted before in a movie called The Resurrected, which was adapted and directed by Dan O'Bannon, who famously did uh, Alien, or wrote Alien, and uh, Return of the Living Dead, and other genre offerings. He's dead. He's very dead, and uh, he, he brought that story to life in The Resurrected. And you know what? The Resurrected is an underappreciated little nugget of the genre. It, first of all, just from an effects standpoint, it is a feast to watch. Some really excellent effects work in that. Pulpos? Uh, no pulpos. Oh. This is actually one of the least... The least... Uh, Pulpo. <laughs> Traditionally <laughs> Cephalopod-oriented yeah. <laughs> Lovecraft tales. There's, there's no... Uh, great sea races or anything like that there's a lot more ancient tomes and wizards and such fungal tomes uh probably some fungal Damn. tomes yeah okay it's more about magic and it's more about um uh, power gone awry mm. um that would be an amazing thing to see brought to life correctly Given that they exclude one chapter oh. in the book, is it racist? Where well, there is some of that, but oh, the, okay. the, there is this one chapter in the fucking book that Lovecraft just spends wheedling on and on like I do, <laughs> only about describing this fucking town. Oh yeah, I'm talking to painstaking detail, and I'm like, is man, there better be some insane some purpose point? to yeah. this? Nope, he just, I, you know, he was. He was an Anglophile, but he was also very much a, a man about his particular area, New England. So he just indulged in that shit sometimes. Like, let's just describe this hometown, bro. <laughs> I gotta pad this bad baby up. Yeah, man. Fuck, that shit takes forever, man. It's one of the worst chapters in existence. <laughs> in literary history? Yes, man. It has no purpose other than for him to go check out my town. It's pretty cool, right? 
There ain't no Browns. Because he's racist. Let me give you a call or a Lovecraft and tell you. Suck. They're fucking licked. Yeah. Anyway, case of Charles Dexter Ward. And that would probably be my choice. Um, to see brought to life properly. Um, you know, there, there was a lot cut from the adaptation that we do have, the resurrected. Though I still recommend it. It's pretty awesome. Unfortunately, the town scene was not cut. Yeah. That would suck. I'm a crack dry, man. <laughs> talking like straight up dusty crack. <laughs> It wouldn't be good, is what I'm saying. <laughs> bad. Uh, yeah, man, that would probably be a choice. I know you haven't read a lot of Lovecraft, but uh, you have read some. Is there one particular you'd be interested in? I haven't read... Uh, I would say I haven't read most of it, so I can't choose. I don't, I'm don't. i not an informed I would, person. Look, I would like something of an anthology to happen. Yeah, that, that would make sense. Because you wrote a lot of short sense, fiction. It's, yeah, it's like some of the stuff isn't... Like, the stuff I've read is more like the super short shit. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's what I'm saying. I, I don't I don't know if that shit would work in movie form. Yeah. It, so it would, yeah, it would definitely be interesting to see uh, stories like the music of Eric Zahn. Or do like uh, do something like the Call of Cthulhu, Call of Cthulhu 2006 game did, where it just combined different stories and made a narrative out of we, that. We kind of already have movies like that, like in um, in the Mouth of Madness from from John yeah. Carpenter took a lot of influence from a lot of different. Lovecraft stories and just kind of made its own. Yeah, movie. and that seems to be a, that seems to be cool. Yeah, I just think we need more anthologies, and they've tried it before with uh, Necronomicon, the movie Necronomicon from Brian Yuzna, mm. uh, with Jeffrey Combs playing <laughs> Lovecraft. By the way, so uh, three different stories. Excuse me, it's a fairly decent movie. Uh, it's not perfect, but it, it's pretty cool. Uh, product of its time for sure, but it, it's pretty neat. And I've always liked Brian Yuzna. He's very underappreciated, so maybe I'm being a little yeah, biased. You're a Yuzna fan. But, yeah, man, I think a concept like that, taken a little bit more serious from creators that are a bit more capable, i.e. Del Toro, would be awesome. Uh, an anthology series, as I've mentioned, I would love to see the music of Eric Zahn, which is by far considered one of the greatest stories, short, of his short stories, not related to mythos at all, just kind of standalone. There's a story called The Transition of Juan Romero, which kind of deals with uh, the same concepts of ancient deities coming forth and stuff like that. But it roots it in, in, in uh, if I remember correctly, it's it's Mexico or at the, at the very least the American Southwest. And uh, obviously there's a uh, Latino thing in there. Of course, they're described as basically apes. Damn it. Because Lovecraft is a about, racist son of a bitch. I but, was about to be like, ah, oh, that's pretty cool for a racist But, but dude, it, it's super cool because yeah. the gods there are these ancient, you know, kind of pseudo uh, um, archaic American, you know, like Aztec style gods. Mm. The drumming as they come back. It's a really cool story. The transition of Juan Romero. That would be something cool to see. Now, would you get John Romero from Doom? Dude, I'm gonna <laughs> punch your fucking gonads off. <laughs> to play him. Fuck that shit. Fuck that comment. Fuck John Romero for that <laughs> yeah, stupid he, bullshit he, he did. He's a big butthole, oh yeah. But um, yeah, that would be a cool one. Uh, definitely not the Cats of Wolfar, because fuck that story. Um, cat? That's fuck a cat, man. And, and then there's weird stories that I, that I would never see anybody liking, except for maybe like a super hardcore... Uh, Lovecraft buff, like Love the tomb that came to Sarnath. That's a weird story. It kind of like it's a kind of kind of like a history story, really. And you know, these lizard people come and they destroy a town. Oh, it's that uh, book you had the cover with the little. Yeah, like, it was on the cover of the thing. I kind of like those little guys. Um, music of Eric Zahn, uh, transition of Juan Romero. Nyarlathotep. Nyarlathotep to date is my favorite Lovecraft story, and it's only like a page and a half long. Mm. Depending on, on how it's formatted, page, maybe three at most. Um, I'm sorry, two pages, three at most. So much encapsulates everything that Lovecraft is in that tiny space. You know, that would be amazing to see as kind of like the sweeping, yet very succinct idea of what the mythos, the Cthulhu mythos <laughs> feels like you know that would be pretty cool because it would be brief uh so yeah man anthology i think would be more suited to the smaller stuff but yeah mountains of madness yeah 
Hopefully one day Del Toro will see it, but I'm more in, I'm more in light of a case of Charles Dexter Ward, personally speaking. So here you have it. Now, Del Toro, make it. Damn make you. Make something. I don't know. Anybody, please. It's been a while since we got a Lovecraft movie. Yeah. So I guess we're getting the, the like straight color adaptation. out of space. Yeah. But we got like dude, we got... there's so many color out of space movies. It's crazy. The Curse, De Farba. Uh, this new one. There's been several. There's been several Color Out of Space movies. It's, it's pretty crazy. Tommy Knockers from Stephen King is basically his version of Color Out of Space, you know, only with more cocaine in it. Yeah. Him in his nose. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't good. Anyway, <laughs> his cocaine use. I mean, not the book. <laughs> I have wanted to kill you. I have uh, discussed Lovecraft to the best of my capabilities, yeah. while restraining my urge to strangle you. <laughs> with your inanities that is my fault yeah because so, I am as responsible for inanities as the next man yep so as they say you've, you've set what goes a, around comes around you've set a standard I just lived up to you it you just lived up to yeah. it yeah <laughs> uh, but anyway yeah I'll say all that to say this um, if they do make a Lovecraft uh, big scale Lovecraft movie it should should star Ice Cube <laughs> yes you have a corn pistola he has a chrome pistola, yeah. and here's the kicker: he's Cthulhu. Oh, dude! That's you know it. What? Yeah, yeah. It's a good idea. Boom! You come near his little underground palace, you just hear yay yay. Yeah, fucking weeby clubbing is blasting <laughs> out of the weird structure. Lots of bass in that fucking yeah. structure. Anyway, that'll be a good movie. <laughs> I think so. Better than Janky Promoters, at least. Fuck, man, Janky Promoters. Anyway, tell us what you think about Janky Promoters. <laughs> And what Lovecraft story would you like seeing brought to life? Hit like, share, subscribe, and notification buttons. Because we're out. These music stupid sounds all kinds of shit for you. Everything goes inside the night, don't come with corpulent juice. These music stupid sounds all kinds of shit for you. Everything goes